Tamriel, Dawn's beauty in the language of the Altmer, or Dazukan in the Dragon's Tongue, is the continent upon which all the Elder Scrolls games take place. Home to many diverse races, and even more conflicts, Tamriel has been host to many adventures. You've experienced Tamriel in your own way, but want to learn more about its story. Well, to get to the heart of the story, you have to go back to the beginning. Tamriel is a land divided. Divided by race, divided by culture, and divided by greed. Yet, there was once a time in its history when this land fell under a single banner, was driven by a single purpose, and was ruled by a single leader. This is the story of one man and his legacy. A story that some say truly begins to reveal itself in the province of Skyrim, with a young warrior who went by many names, but the Nords called Talos. At a young age, Talos was already a warrior of remarkable skill. Spending your youth with the rugged children of Skyrim often has that effect. In his earliest years, he was bred for battle by the Nords. Under their influence, he quickly learned the art of speaking the dragon's tongue. But he was no mere pupil. Talos wielded the power of the voice with a skill and ease thought only to belong to dragons. Yes, the unbridled power of dragon shouts would assist Talos in the decades to come, but the most important thing this warrior learned in his youth was the art of war. Shouts are useful weapons on the battlefield and the Nords depend on them greatly, but strategy wins wars, strategy builds empires. During the early days of his military career, fate led Talos to a man named Kulakane, the King of Falkyrie. The two became fast friends, and after proving himself worthy, Talos was named Kalakane's military general. Talos was a mere 20 years of age at the time. In his earliest recorded victory, General Talos led the now famous invasion of Old Heraldin, which at the time was in the hands of the Reachmen of High Rock known today as the Forsworn. With only a small band of Golovian troops and Nord berserkers at his command, the newly appointed general proved a shrewd tactician, and in no time at all his forces broke the Reachmen's lines, driving them back into the gates of Old Horolden. As the Reachmen mocked the young general from the safety of their walls, Talos called upon the power of the voice, his Thum, and soon the walls of Old Horolden came crashing down. As Talos shouted down wall after wall, the Reachmen looked in terror as the Nords poured into the stronghold to claim it in the name of their king. It was a remarkable victory, no doubt, but it was what happened next that would echo through the coming ages. As the dust was settling in Old Horalden, a great storm grew over Skyrim. A storm of its magnitude only meant one thing to the Nords. The Greybeards were about to speak. As nearby villages were being evacuated, Talos instead walked into the eye of the storm. It is important to note that Talos was a man of faith and prophecy. His determination and belief in himself drove him to do great things in his lifetime. His meeting with the Greybeards was destiny, and when destiny beckons to a man, who is he to deny it? Driven by forces unseen, Talos took the pilgrimage up the 7,000 steps to the throat of the world. There, the Greybeards acknowledged him, removed their gags, and spoke his name, his true name, Dragonborn. As the Greybeards spoke his name, the very roots of Tamriel shook, and the world trembled. The Greybeards told the Dovahkiin that he would usher in the coming of a new age, an age in where men would usurp elves and take their seats as the undisputed rulers of a united Tamriel but it would come at a cost. The Dragonborn must travel to the south, to Cyrodiil. There he will recover that which has been lost. With this prophecy still ringing in his ears, Talos traveled with his king back down to the southern border of Skyrim. 
It was already Colocane's ambition to secure the Colovian states of Cyrodiil, and he saw his opportunity in his mighty general. As General Talos moved his forces south through the towering Gerald Mountains, his army was forced to a standstill at Sancrator. Sancrator was impregnable. A citadel on high cliffs, nestled in a mountain basin with steep, unscalable cliffs in the rear. An alliance of Breton and Nordic forces comfortably occupied the citadel during these cold winter months, and from atop the fortress, they dare King Colocane's new general to shout down their walls. Faced with an impossible task, Talos is said to have received a divine vision of the Amulet of Kings, that which has been lost for centuries. The Amulet of Kings was once worn by the rulers of the First and Second Empires. It has served not only as a symbol of nobility, but its divine blessings ensures that only those of dragon's blood may wield it. In his later years, Talos said that this vision inspired what happened next. Talos's army at the time was small, poorly trained and outfitted, short on rations, and unprepared for winter campaigning. As his ragged troops assembled in the lowlands beneath the citadel, his enemies confidently assumed that Talos had unknowingly delivered his army into a trap. You see, Sancrator was not only protected by an unscalable cliff in the front and unscalable heights in the rear, but it also held a secret entrance to the citadel that is magically concealed under the appearance of a large mountain lake. Ready to crush Talos and his small army, the Nord Breton allies left a small force to defend the citadel, descending through the secret lower passages to attack and overwhelm the cold, hungry forces before them. They expected to defeat, overrun, and utterly obliterate General Talos's army. Instead, they were lured to their doom. While the enemy left Sancrator virtually undefended, Talos and the main bulk of his army entered the citadel via the entrance his enemies thought was a secret. Once inside Sancrator, Talos and his men swept aside the remaining defenders and captured their generals. Thus, he forced them to surrender the citadel and their armies. Interestingly enough, the Nords who fought tooth and nail to defend Sancrator from Talos quickly deserted the Bretons and swore loyalty to the Dragonborn once they saw him use his thum. With his army now swelling in numbers, the leaders of the Bretons were summarily executed and the captive soldiers imprisoned or sold into slavery. After the sack of Sancrator, General Talos descended into the old fort, where he found the catacombs of an empire long forgotten. He returned from the crypt of Raymond III with the Amulet of Kings grasped firmly in his hand, thus fulfilling prophecy and bringing man one step closer to the rebirth of an empire. With tales of this impossible victory spreading through the nine provinces, General Talos went on to unify East and West Cyrodiil in the year that followed. It seemed no one could stand before his mighty thum, and in the second era, year 854, the White Gold Tower yielded itself to the Dragon of the North. With the White Gold Tower falling under their control, the keys of Cyrodiil were up for grabs, and King Colocane was ready to take his place on the ruby throne, with his now famous general at his side. But someone had a different plan in mind. In a conspiracy that is still debated about today, the Imperial Palace was set ablaze, and in the confusion, a knight blade from the province of High Rock assassinated King Kalakane and nearly killed Talos in the process, or so the story goes. Although General Talos did escape the palace with his life, a fresh wound across his throat ensured he would never shout again. The Dragonborn was forced to spend the rest of his days ruling an empire with only his whisper, but rule he did. In the aftermath of King Kalakane's assassination, Talos ascended to the throne, the amulet of kings hanging from his freshly scarred neck. Recognizing him as one of their own, Cyrodiil stripped Talos of his birth name and gave him the Cyrodelic name of Tiber Septim. A new empire was on the horizon, and with it, 
the promise of change. Change that would stretch to every corner of the continent, the kind of change that carries itself on a river of blood. Nine provinces hang in the balance, and a man driven by conviction and ambition sits on a throne in the center of it all. Unity isn't something Tamriel has been known for, but then again, Tamriel never knew a man like Tiber Septim. A man who knew how to wage war, but more importantly, knew when to make peace. But that is a story for another day. <laughs>